Hello, it's Scott Manley here, back with another episode of Things Kerbal Space Program Doesn't Teach You. Now, in Kerbal Space Program, the most efficient engine is the ION engine. Now, many people haven't used it because it's kind of a niche item that works well for space probes, making them as efficient as possible. But in Kerbal Space Program, it's a lot easier to just add more and more boosters. Kerbal Space Program does do something interesting. The fuel for ION engines is xenon. Now, the other fuels in the game are not really as specific. We have liquid fuel, we have monopropellant, we have oxidizer, there's ore, but xenon, that is a real element. That is curiously specific. And it turns out that in real life, xenon is the preferred propellant for electrical thrusters. And that might beg the question, why is xenon so popular? What properties does it possess that makes it good? So let's go back and look at how an ion engine works. What happens is the propellant is injected into a chamber where it is ionized, typically by knocking electrons off of it. And then these ionized atoms or ions are accelerated through an electric field where they leave the spacecraft and provide reaction mass and uh, therefore a thrust. There's no special chemistry required of the, of the propellants, unlike in a chemical engine where you need a specific chemical reaction to happen. It, all of the energy is coming from the electrical systems that are powering everything. In theory, you could use any atom that would be ionized. But xenon offers a particular advantage over many alternatives because of its chemistry or rather lack thereof. You see, xenon is a noble gas, which means it doesn't really form chemical uh, molecules with anything else. It just is. It really wants to be on its own. So that makes it unlikely to interact with your delicate electronics or your sensors or anything else, or even the structural elements of the spacecraft. It won't attack any of those, which is good. It's also not a metal at room temperature, which means it's not going to get deposited on something and cause a short circuit. It's also a gas at room temperature, which makes it easy to handle. However, there are other noble gases, right? There's helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, and radon. All of those are noble gases. Why wouldn't you use those? Especially when you consider that argon is about 1 30th of the price of xenon uh, for the same mass. The first step in the ion thruster is to ionize the propellant, which requires knocking an electron out of orbit around the atom. The ionization step is the, one of the biggest energy requirements for any ion thruster. The energy required to do this varies from one element to the next, but within elements of the same periodic group, the ionization energy is always lower as the atomic mass gets higher or the atomic number increases. What happens really is that as we get more uh, protons in the nucleus, you get more electrons in the clouds orbiting it. And so the atoms tend to get bigger. That means that the electrons furthest out are less strongly bound and therefore easier to knock off. That's the approximate version. The energy required to ionize argon is about 15.8 electron volts whereas the energy required to ionize xenon is about 12.1 electron volts, and that's almost a 25% reduction. But it gets better than that because that energy is per atom, and the xenon atoms have an atomic mass of about 131, whereas argon has an atomic mass of about 40. So the ionization energy of xenon per unit mass is about a quarter of the ionization energy for argon. But that's only part of the story. The next step is the ions are accelerated through an electric field. Now, an ion being accelerated through an electric field gains energy according to its electric charge. So if you have an argon atom and a xenon atom both ionized to the first level, that is both missing just one electron, they both emerge from this electric field with the same energy. But the argon atom is lighter, so it would actually be moving about 80% faster than the xenon atom, which if you know rocket science would tell you that an argon-based ion thruster would have a specific impulse about 80% better. That might be considered an advantage. However, since ion thrusters already do about 10 times better in terms of specific impulse than chemical thrusters, it's not necessarily that interesting. 
If we look at the momentum difference, then the xenon atom will come out with 80% more momentum than the argon atom. And so it generates more than twice the thrust per atom. Combine that with the lower ionization energy and it makes more propellant available and you get more than twice the thrust from a xenon thruster compared to an argon thruster. The thrust on ion thrusters is so small, so minuscule, that getting double the thrust is extremely desirable. And so xenon remains the fuel of choice for most spacecraft, even although it costs 30 times as much. That being said, you might ask, why not go more, one more step up the periodic table? If you look at it, there's one more noble gas, one step up. That is radon. Well, radon has a mass of 222 and an ionization energy of 10.8, which would work out to about 45% better performance over xenon, which would be quite desirable if it were not for the fact that radon is radioactive and the lengthiest half-life for a xenon isotope is about 3.8 days. And in case you're wondering, the next step up in the noble gas hierarchy after that has been synthesized by a, as a super heavy atomic element. It's named Oganesson after uh, Yuri Oganesian. And uh, this has a half-life of 700 microseconds. So great, but it probably wouldn't even make it out of the engine before it decayed. Anyway, I mentioned earlier that within the periodic table, the ionization energy within a group tends to decrease with atomic mass, but within a period of the periodic table, the energy actually increases. So the noble gases on each period on the periodic table actually have the highest ionization energy. If you go one step past xenon, you get cesium. And cesium has an ionization energy of 3.9 electron volts. That's one third of the ionization energy of xenon. So that would seem to be highly desirable if you could use it. Cesium is actually easily made into a liquid and it has been tested in ion thrusters. In fact, the very first spacecraft, the SMART spacecraft in the 1960s, was launched with two test ion thrusters, one using mercury and the other using cesium. Uh, they didn't work out so well over time, and in the Soviet designs for ion thrusters using Hall effect thrusters, they totally began to dominate in the 1970s. They used noble gases, they used xenon. So uh, using cesium, hasn't really come to fruition just yet. The LISA or LISA Pathfinder mission was a technology demonstrator mission launched about two years or a year ago, basically, 2015. Yes, late 2015 it was launched. And uh, it was supposed to have a reaction control system that would use cesium based ion thrusters. But the development of that kind of ended up being a little slower than they expected. So they replaced that with a more conventional cold gas reaction control system. So we've yet to see modern cesium based ion thrusters fly, but we may see them at some point because people are definitely interested in them. So anyway, for now, xenon is the go-to option and now you understand why. I'm Scott Manley, fly safe.